Bless me, welcome on a five star top ranked player in 2023, Chris Lockett. How you doing, man? Doing good, and yourself? Pretty good. Well, we've this is probably like our fourth interview now, and we've gone through a lot of different stuff starting heading into your freshman year. Well, now you're about to wrap up your sophomore year, number one seed, three more games away from state championship. You're having a big time year. Can I take us through how you're feeling right now? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling very confident since going into the playoffs, and I like our chance to win a state. You really emerged as a leader. We know you've always kind of been a go-to guy, a star, but now it's clearly coming onto the court. You're leading your team, I said, number one seed. You're averaging close to 20 points a game right now. Take us through how you really emerged as a leader and go-to guy. Uh, like, a lot of matureness. Like, I've been maturing off the leaders of our team, like, Everett and Gabe. They are, like, captains of the team. So I'm just touching base with them on telling them what I need to work on and stuff. I know you have a high confidence. I know you always talked about you want to be and you believe you are the best player in the class. What's your mindset every time you get on that court? Uh, just being a dog, just playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, age ain't number, number to me, to be honest. And, like, if you really feel like you're a dog, you can show it on the court and mentally. You're at a school that maybe not everyone's completely familiar with, but when you start listening to some of the names that's come from that school, if people try to see how special that school is, and there is a teammate with you right now, He's viewed as probably the number one overall prospect for football. Your view is a top 10 prospect, possibly number one overall prospect for basketball, too. What's just like having this much this much talent in one school? Uh, it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of fun because we've been, like, talking about our recruitments and, like, mm -hmm. just talking about what prediction we might have of which team might end up at, at the higher level. And that is Arch Manning. We know who his family kind of runs in. But he also gets to play basketball with you. How is it just, like, kind of building that bond with him and playing with him? Uh, it was just, like, fun. We've been friends since, like, I think when I first came to Newman, probably in the summertime before coming to Newman, like, we just started to build a bond. And, like, he was just telling me about how Newman would be. And ever since then, we got close. So now you look at your future, and we know he's probably in pursuit football, his main thing, your basketball. Could we ever see you guys possibly go to the same college together? Would that be something that you guys would ever be interested in? Uh, yeah, we talked about that. It's, like, a, a few colleges that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And it's probably it's a 50 50 chance right now. Without a doubt. Well, let's kind of go into this now. As I said, three games possibly to state championship, Elite Eight right now for you guys. What's your mindset? And how are you guys preparing for this state championship run? Uh, uh, Estimate your opponent, basically. Just play like it's a normal game. Don't play nervous and give it to all every time you step on the court. Now, you do have a guy, a head coach, and Coach Livingston, that has done what you want to do. He's played at LSU, played in the NBA. He's a great coach. But take us through your eyes, Bond. How has that grown developed up until this point? Uh, it's been very good. I mean, we had a lot of arguments. And I need my weaknesses to become my strengths. And we just study in the game as a, like a student of the game. And he's been playing at the highest level for like, I guess, like 20 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like this touching base and – let him help me get to what I'm trying to go at, and that's trying to be the best basketball player I can be. Where did this bond first start? Did you guys start talking when you guys first got to high school, when you were choosing your high school, before that? Like, when did you guys really start building that bond? Uh, so, like, when I was just choosing my, the high school that I wanted to go to, and, like, he would just preach to me that you can be a young leader and you could just, just group to a whole other level and change the outcome of the school. We've seen more and more now guys of your caliber, the elite of the elite, Constantly want to go travel around, possibly play at a prep school, national schedule. Is that something you might explore? Rather it be for junior, senior year, is that something we could see you explore or look into? Uh, as of right now, no. I mean, I feel like I'm good at home, but, like, it might be a possibility. I might just look into it. Mm -hmm. Like, as of right now, I feel like I'm going to finish my career at Newman because, like, I, I love staying home and, like, putting on for my city. My city, you're in Louisiana. Take us through growing up out there. We know it's not necessarily the richest area for basketball, but there are still a lot of big-time players come out of there. Just take us through the pride of being a Louisiana player. Uh, it's funny you got to play with a chip on your shoulder because people don't think you're really into basketball how you think you really are because it's really a football state. So it's really like they feel like you just out here just because. And I, I've been dealing with that my whole life. Like At one point, I was underranked. And I had to go play on the Houston team. And Houston is like the mecca of basketball, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So I had to play on that team just to get my name out there. 
Now, we look at AU. We know this wasn't quite the typical AU season last year. You still got some kind of stuff in, but overall, hopefully this year, we have the full on circuits. We have everything back normal like it was. Are we still planning to go Houston, Houston Hoops, or is another team looking at Like, what's the AU situation look like for you? Right now, my options is open. I mean, I don't play for no team right now. And just like, I'm just trying to do what's best for me. But it's a possibility that I'm going on EYBL circuit. Mm hmm. That is going to be a huge year for you. We know sophomore, junior year is going to be huge, especially since, like I said, you didn't even have a past year freshman going to sophomore year. So what do you want to prove? What do you want to walk away from AU season this year? What do you want people to remember Chris Locke as? Uh, probably the best player in, the, in that class and was underrated. And, like, I can do everything on the court and play defense. And you are also a humble guy. I know a lot of people talk about you, and obviously I know you too, that we know how special you can be, but you're also humble. You help others off the court. How have you learned to be able to flip that mindset? Uh, it's just like I've been doing, doing it my whole life. I mean, I'm just Chris on the court, and I'm just a cool guy. Off it, like I'm just laid back, chill, just mm -hmm. trying to get through school and just play the game a lot. You mentioned that also your height. You keep on growing. We've seen that last the first time I think you were six foot one. Now six foot four about a year ago. Now you're at six foot six, still growing. How have you grown into this height? Uh, a lot of stretching and lifting a lot. Lifting the gym a lot. I can imagine it can be painful at times too. Have you dealt with that or are you pretty much grown into it and kind of used to it now? Uh, it's, it was a lot of pain at first. I mean, it just wear off as time going on. And like my knee, it was like at one point my knees were just hurting bad. I could barely like run and it just kept getting better as I went on. Are you expected to still keep growing? Like I said, you're at six foot six, maybe a little bit over that now. Where do you kind of plan to possibly keep growing to? Or do you think you're about done now? I think I could still grow like for the next two years. I mean, I think I'll stop growing until like I'm 18. So I'm, uh, I know I'm not done growing. At that height, you still are a guard. You can run point guard, shooting guard. Obviously, if you really want to run small ball, you could also space it out, run three at times too. But you're able to be that big guard. We see more and more guys developing into that. How have you learned to use that height advantage against other guards? Uh, it's like I've been, I was playing, like, I was little, I was playing post a lot. So that's why, like, when I have little guards on, I just put them in a post. Absolutely. Well, you got two more years left of high school basketball. What else do you want to accomplish and achieve in the last couple of years of high school? Uh, Wayne State for the next three years, be a leader, uh, possibly be Jordan Bryant Classic player, McDonald's All-American, Gatorade Player of the Year mm -hmm. for my class and for the state, and hopefully going to a great college that fit me best. And that's really another big thing for you now. We know ultimately the biggest goal of high school is make it to the next level, and that will be college for you. So let's look into some of those offers. You have a lot on the table right now, but who are you kind of talking to the most, or who have you kind of heard from the most? Uh, as of right now, I ain't heard from no school. I mean, I've really been focused on my high school season as of right now. And it's just like, I know they're going to come. I'm just, just focusing on the season and the team right now. Now, we do know it's about a few more months away Tell you to start really getting that recruiting process, start talking to coaches, texting them frequently. But let's look at some of these offers right now. LSU, I know, is a big, attractive one. A lot of top guys have been going there recently, and that's at home for you. you got to stay close to the family. How appealing would that be for you? That would be good. I mean, let my family members come to my games. I mean, I have a big support in cash, like, especially for high school. So that would be good for me if I, go to, if I choose to go to LSU. I mean, that would be a great opportunity for me and my family. You just look at the overall program. Coach Will Wade's a pretty great, great coach. We're seeing how productive they've been since he got out there. But what do you like about his coaching style and overall LSU's game plan? Uh, they like He let his guys play. Like, he don't – he run. I like how he runs sets. Mm -hmm. And he's mature on defense. Like, he's just strictly on that. Play defense, you get the ball, score, score the ball. I know a big thing for a lot of guys is seeing how a coach develops a guy into ultimately becoming a pro. And I'm not sure there's been a guy this past year has done it better than what Coach Boyne's done at Oklahoma State with Cade Cunningham this year. And we talk about you being a big guard now, the big point guard, shooting guard kind of player. Seeing how he's done Cade Cunningham and seeing how he's turned into what most likely will be the number one overall pick, how much more appealing does that make Oklahoma State to you? 
Oh, very good. Like I've been watching him like this whole season, and I I like how he has K running his position. I like how he's the really the flow general. Coach Boyan, we know, is a lot younger than some coaches, and he's got that energy. He's got that fun vibe about him. What do you like about him and his coaching staff? Yeah, he he relies on loyalty, and he's he's he got good energy, good vibes. So what would your dream coach look like? We know some guys like them that are older, some like them younger, some like them more kind of strict, some like them more fun, like game plan wise, like just kind of build up what your dream coach might look like. Uh, My dream coach is really like fun, fun. He's just fun, let us play, I mean, but still strict at the same time mm-hmm. and just let us know our weaknesses and let us work on that. So it would be great if we're going to March Madness then we could win an NCAA title. Grambling is another one I feel is a lot appealing to a lot of guys right now. We know it's at HBCU. We know all the momentum about them the past year. Is that something you're going to look into? Are you interested in possibly taking HBCU route and kind of creating a new path for guys? Uh, Yeah, that's something to look into. I mean, my options is very open, to be honest. Like, I could explore everything. So it's really, I'm not worried about D1, uh, all that. I'm open to anything, D2, D3. Everything to be honest. A big thing too is that we know there's not too many of us done it yet, but we do know it's not a typical thing. There's only so many guys that make it to the NBA out of there. Is that something that you would kind of look into? Would that kind of kind of be a little worrisome to you, or is that something that you're okay with and you, you'd be cool kind of becoming one of the first to make it out? Yeah, it'd be fun. I mean, the first to do it, that'd be always a great accomplishment because I can inspire generations down that you don't really have to go to a blue blood school or like some big top school just to go to the NBA. Georgetown's got to be appealing to a lot of guys because we know it's, it's a historic coach. It's a Hall of Fame kind of player, Patrick Ewing, coaching them. What would that be like? What would it be like kind of being coached once again by another guy that's played in the NBA and done what you ultimately want to do someday? Yeah, it'd, it'd be good. I mean, learning something from someone a great, to be honest, in the NBA. I was, I was in the NBA, and he just tell me, like, what I need to work on and how can I fit into, into today's NBA. Typically, they haven't been the most successful team the past couple of years. They do have a special 2021 recruiting class. But when you see a lot of the top-ranked players go to a certain school, does that make them more appealing to you? No, I really don't. I mean, I really just won't go based off my opinion, like, which school will fit me the best. Without a doubt. Well, there is another one that's become kind of attracting some guys. That is Wichita State. So Coach Brown's coming out here and done. He's been spectacular this past year. What do you like about what Wichita State's building out there? Well, it's very good. I mean, I like what they're doing out there. And it's, it's becoming very appealing when I first called them. And, like, the assistant coach had a lot of energy. And, like, mm-hmm. they made me go more doing my research on what they've been building. Like, Fred Van Lee went there. Mm-hmm. And so I like what they're doing. It is out there in Kansas, a little far away from Louisiana. Is that okay for you, or does distance not really matter? It doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I really don't get homesick. I, I like to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. The other one that I know guys do like is, once again, the NBA feeling. But for this time, it's Penny Hardaway, and he is that big guard, too. He's literally done exactly what you want to do someday. How appealing is that to you? Oh, it's very appealing because my old AAU coach used to call me him, so it was just like – Special when I first got a phone call from him, and it was just a special moment for me to like look into his highlights, then getting a call from him. When you did talk to him, what did you guys talk about? Kind of what was his pitch to you, or what was he kind of talking to you about? Uh, that he wanted to offer me, he liked my game a lot. I looked just like him. Absolutely. I know one team that too that is really attracting is because of what they've been doing recently at Baylor. Obviously, just won the Big 12 Conference right now, and they have a lot of top guys want to go there too. But what do you like about Coach Drew and what Baylor's doing right now? Uh, I like what they're doing. I mean, he's letting like guys play and they're playing team basketball. And I like how he's using Jared Butler, and he's from down here. So I like how he – that's a very appealing to me. That he's using him and his sets and, like, get him the ball and let him run a point guard. How appealing is it when you see a school that wins a lot of games? Obviously, I said Baylor wins the conference and a couple other schools have been competitive this year. How appealing is winning to you? Uh, it's, it's very like appealing because 
I don't want to come into a. I mean, it don't really don't matter if I come into a losing program. I, I feel like I can change that into a winning program. We can go to March Madness. Uh-huh. So it's really that's very it's like a plus boost for that. But it's really like it doesn't matter. It's just based on who fits me the most. And you are a top guy, and we've seen all these guys always talking about who they want to team up with. We know always something that's hot for guys. Are there anyone that you've talked to in 2023 or even another class that you could see yourself poppy team up with? Uh, for sure, KJ, Ron, Isaiah Collier, mm-hmm. probably DJ Wag. I talk to him a lot. And Omaha Blue. Mm-hmm. That's my guys. For sure. Uh, we just started to build a bar. Me, DJ, and Omaha at USA because it was like, it was like full 2023, dude. So we were just talking about possibility of college we can go to together. How much could you three be together at the college level? I mean, very good. I mean, especially it depends on where, where we go at. I mean, it really don't matter where we go at, though, because we I feel like we could win March Madness. We could win an NCAA title. So that would be a plus for us. No doubt. A couple more schools you have offers from I want to touch up on. One is Houston. They've had an incredible season, too. Done something special, too, with another top former top five star, Quinn Grimes. But we talked about earlier, you have that dog mentality, and that's what they kind of build the whole program around. What about Coach Sampson and what Houston's doing out there? Yeah, they like, they rely on defense. So I, I really, based off that, I mean, defense brings energy for offense. So, I mean, I like what they're doing over there. They were running earlier offers, too. Does that have any kind of hold on you when you talk about long term? Knowing that they've been with you from the beginning, does that have any impact on your recruitment? Yeah, yeah, that's us. I mean, based off loyalty, yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the other first offers too was Vanderbilt. What do you like about them? Uh, I like what Coach Jerry Steckhouse is doing with Scotty Pippen Jr. I mean, letting him run the sets, mm-hmm. being really the flow general in the heart of the team. Absolutely, man. Well. We know hopefully visits will start opening up for you guys. 2020 got a few of them in. 2021 is not getting any visits in. 22, we'll see what happens. But you guys should get visits in, hopefully starting the spring and summer. How excited are you to be able to go on those visits and start seeing colleges and campuses? Uh, I feel like that's going to be, like, very, very important important to me because, like, I can't just go off what someone says over the phone. I, I feel like the energy in real life. Mm-hmm. Now, you do have a family that's in part of the sports world. We know your cousin, Derek Allen, he also was a great player in college, and then he became one of the youngest coaches to ever become a coach in college. Take us through what's just like kind of having sports run your family. Uh, it's fun because they just correct me when I'm, like, wrong, and, like, they just guide me through uh, what's going to happen during this process and how a coach is going to come and just feel the fake energy just through everything. We discussed earlier your mindset and how we do believe you're number one. And you have something pinned on Twitter. Put me in the comment for number one. Take us through that and just what your thoughts are on that. Uh, I, feel like I, I feel like I should have been in that conversation since I was in, like, fifth grade. I mean, I was number number one in my class. It, it's, it's been different every year mm-hmm. ever since I was in, like, fifth grade. So, I mean, I feel like I should be in that conversation. Someone that I think, as we talked about earlier, you're still growing. You still have many, many years to develop into your final product. But when we look at down the road, maybe five, six, seven years, when you hit your prime time kind of time, what can we expect from you? How special can Chris Lockett be? I could be very special if I just put the work in and just stay focused, keep a level head. Is there a certain player you kind of watch that you compare yourself to or think you play a lot like? Uh, ever since I was left, I felt like I play like Kevin Durant, but like I feel like I can't be like six ten or seven foot. So I just really, I feel like I play like James Harden a lot. Mm-hmm. You brought up a little bit ago too. Team USA was a huge thing. We've discussed that before, but you're probably gonna get an invite back whenever USA starts back up again. Just take us through that first experience. What was it like just being a part of Team USA and going to that mini camp? It was fun. I mean, just seeing while Matt. As an A grader, I was I think that was the first mini cap I went to as an A grader. Mm-hmm. It was fun, it was a lot of experience. It was a lesson learned, like you still need to put work in because I was getting killed. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like no, the first camp I was getting killed by some guy. I can at 20 class that that's in college going on. 
And the second mini camp, I got killed by Josh Christopher. I mean, he was just killing me. Then I just moved, he took the ball from me. So it was just like, dang, I got to like get stronger for working. Obviously, that's what all guys say. When you're there, they only bring a couple of young guys because they know this is the best of the best from each class. So obviously, those guys will be a lot better. They're three, four years older than you. What was the biggest thing you learned when you're going up against a guy like Jacob, who's going to be a top 20 pick? Most Mooney, he's one of the top freshmen in the entire country right now. All you guys just talked about. What did you learn from them? Oh, uh, that I need to still work on my game. I mean, I need to take no days off. And that's always somebody coming for your spot. Was there anyone you went to there and you kind of, that was older than you, they kind of talked to that, they kind of helped mentor you or help you at all? Yeah, it was just like stay humble. Mm -hmm. uh, especially DJ Stewart, he was a very humble guy, cool guy. Uh, he was just like preaching about just staying humble. I mean, just put the work in. You could be a dog. He had a breakout season during that EYBL year too, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, a few more things before I let you go. One of which is kind of discussing your faith. I know you're also a believer. Can I discuss your faith? How has God helped get you to the point you're at today? Oh, uh, he helped me a lot. I mean, there was some days that I, I wanted to give up, like I wanted to just quit it, but like I felt like he put me on this earth for a purpose, and like it was just probably not for basketball. It's probably helping other people mm -hmm. do what they believe they can they can do. Whatever to put them on to. Ultimately, we know your story is nowhere near done yet, but when we look back at it, you come from Louisiana, you're gonna have this whole long story. How do you plan to bring other people to God? How do you plan to kind of be a role model to others and kind of shine God's light when you get to a higher platform and higher stage? Uh, I feel like I could just help others out, help. So I could donate money to foundations and, like, help kids out that's less fortunate, like me, like other people. Would you say there's one moment specifically that you look back at that you feel like God's helped you or kind of shrunk the most in your life? Uh, yeah, when I, like, I think when I almost, like, broke my ankle mm -hmm. and when I had to sit out last year for a couple games because of school. No doubt. My final thing for you, I was, like, wrapping up with the discussing your legacy, and that's something that the all guys ultimately want to build for themselves. So when your time is done, you stop playing basketball, you step away from the game, what do you ultimately want to remember for what you achieve both on and off the court? Uh, on the court really a dog and he was the best player that stepped on the court every time and off the court he was a cool chill helping guy absolutely man well i definitely appreciate you taking time to come on today and best of luck of the rest of the season and can we see what god got next for you man thank you of course i was welcome on man god bless god bless